Welcome everyone to the zoning board of June seventh. I mean June, yeah. <laughs> March, June. I want my boat in. June seventh. March, uh, March seventh, March seventh, June seventh. I got June in my head for today for some reason. That's because we were talking about all sorts of things. Uh, welcome everybody. If you get a cell phone or a page here, could you please put it on vibrate or silent, not to interrupt the meeting. If you're gonna speak, please step outside. My name is Marty Akins, I'm the chairman, the vice chairman. Mr. Radell, board members, Mr. Himmel, Mr. Chin, Mr. O'Brien, and Mr. Frankel. The director of inspectional service, Mr. Connell behind me, and Ms. Noonan is our clerk. If anyone's gonna testify tonight, please stand up and raise your right hand. Take an oath. If you could, Mr. Chin. Okay, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now and here. An old business, ZBA 2885, Robert Burns, for a variance finding to demolish the existing structure of multiple properties, construct 46 unit residential building premises number 1234 to 1244, Fernsburg Parkway, and 211 and 217 Copeland Street. I'm going to turn the chair over to my vice chair since he ran the last meeting and he can run with it. Uh, Mr. Radell, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Rob Fleming from Fleming & Fleming. I do represent the applicant here, Mr. Beneers. Uh, with me this evening are Mr. Beneers and his son, Bob, who's been very involved with this project as well. Uh, our team is here as well, if you have any specific questions for them. Uh, Cameron Campbell from the Selberg. Uh, Sala is our engineer. Brian Donahue, you all know Brian uh, from Donahue Architects. Uh, Jason DeGray is here from Tool Design, uh, who is our traffic engineer. So questions for them, uh, feel free to ask them as well. Um, so we were here back in November uh, 22 um, for our initial presentation before this board. Uh, Mr. Aikens, uh, uh, for whatever reason, was not here that particular evening. So I'm gonna give you a kind of a recap of, of what this proposal is. Uh, so it does involve a number of parcels um, really at the intersection, close to the intersection of uh, Furnace Park Parkway and, uh, and Copeland Street. Uh, it, it is comprised of several parcels, including 1234 um, Furnace Park Parkway, 1244 Furnace Park Parkway, 211 Copeland and 216, I think it is, 217 Copeland as well. Um, so quite a few parcels as you make your way around that, that corner. Um, the entire area uh, lot itself, all lots are, are zoned residence B, which does allow for multifamily residences. Um, there today are a number of uses. We have two families and, and singles, uh, mostly multi. Uh, Mr. Benair is, um, some of you may know him. Uh, he's been a real pillar here in the city of Quincy uh, for youth sports. He ran Beacon Sporting Goods for, for a number of years. Myself, as I skated, Back in the day, uh, had my own skate sharpener there as well. Uh, so he's been a, a true asset uh, to, to the city of Quincy with his business, with his properties here, uh, raised his family here in the city of Quincy as well. So I hope you, the board will not look at Mr. Benez as just your typical developer here, you know, making this, uh, you know, proposing this particular residential structure here. Um, he cares about the city. The, he, he would not do anything that's gonna be a real detriment to the city. So what he's proposing here is uh, 46 residential units. Uh, I think it's split evenly, 23 two bedrooms, uh, 23 um, two, uh, one bedrooms as well. Two levels of parking under the building. Uh, and let me just say this, we, we really approached this um, with a lot of things in mind. You know, uh, this really wasn't done haphazardly. You know, there's a lot of things you think about, one being the location of this proposal you know, where it is. You know, it's on Furnace Park Parkway, Copeland Street. Um, there's, there's no, uh, it doesn't provide any um, area on both of those streets for any off-street, off-site parking. You know, so that's how we really approached it uh, from a standpoint of, uh, standpoint of parking. You know, and the number of units that we have, can we meet the requirement here in the city of Quincy? You know, which we have met. 
you know, that was very important to us to be able to fit every single car that we need to that's required by this ordinance on site. Uh, what we looked at as well was very important, and I've done a, a few, couple other developments with the same thing in mind. Uh, with our society today, you know, with the Ubers, the Amazons, deliveries, you know, UPS and FedEx and those things, to provide that, um, especially on Furnace Park Parkway, to be able to provide that uh, drive up, you know, to the building um, to be able to accommodate those things, you know, uh, especially Amazon today, you know, a lot of deliveries and things. So we've, we've been able to do that as well. Uh, what was very important to us as well is, is, you know, with the size of the site, it's a little over 53,000 square feet in dimension, so over an acre. It is to provide some nice landscape as well, to ch comply as much as we able, we're able to, and we have, um, based on the size of this building, uh, the setbacks, you know, so we're complying with a lot of that as well. So that was very important to us. But, you know, it started with the parking, you know, what can, what can we do? Um, when we were here in November, when it was opened up to the public, you know, there were some uh, concerns by some neighbors, you know, mainly with respect to traffic. Um, this particular proposal, as this board knows, went through the very thorough process, which you all understand, site plan review before the planning board. Um, as you know, uh, this, pro this proposal was thoroughly reviewed by every single department uh, within the city of Quincy, a peer review consultant as well that looks at um, everything, you know, from drainage, you know, to parking, to site circulation, um, uh, other things as well, zoning. The city's traffic engineer as well looked at this too. Did they have comments? They did, you know, and comments that we had to respond to and we did that. Were they <coughs> comments that were quite a bit? No, they, they really weren't. Uh, there were certainly some concerns and, and we, we've answered those and responded to those, all those uh, uh, comments uh, by those departments and, and individuals uh, satisfactory to them. Uh, so we do have site plan approval through our planning board here in the city of Quincy before we came here. Uh, we're asking, asking here from this board some dimensional relief to be able to, to build this proposal. Uh, but again, the most important point is, you know, Mr. Veneers is a longtime Quincy resident um, he certainly uh, w w does not want to do something that's going to be a detriment. You know, we look, we listen to the professionals, what works at this location. Uh, we think we have a great project here, um, and we would appreciate your consideration uh, this evening. Uh, so again, the entire time is here. Uh, again, you've had the traffic data. I'm, I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to review some of that you know, as well. Uh, the other one request the board had made back in November to have a, a subsequent neighborhood meeting. We had one in uh, December of 21. So this has been going on for some time. Um, the only change that was made from December 21, uh, Mr. Benares had uh, acquired another property on Copeland, uh, 211 specifically, that allowed us to move the egress ingress further up away from the light at Copeland Street uh, which was kind of stressed by the planning department as well you know so we were able to do that regardless we did have another neighborhood meeting um, in January of this year um, some of the same people uh, attended uh, I felt we had a good neighborhood meeting uh, they certainly conveyed uh, their their concerns to us mainly with respect to traffic uh, it was a cordial meeting. We had a great meeting, uh, but they had their concerns. Um, and I, I can't convince anybody, you know, that um, you know this, this, this proposal will not exacerbate any conditions that are there at that particular intersection. I, I'm, I'm not here to convince anybody. I listen to my, to our professionals. You know, you're looking at and Jason get into this a little bit further as well. But you're looking at a 16 uh, vehicle count during peak hours. You know, over that entire hour. You know, so it's really not, you know, adding that much to, to that area. Um, you know, so we feel comfortable with what's being proposed here uh, in a lot of different respects. Uh, but again, um, I don't want to, I know you have a lot of uh, uh, items on your agenda tonight, so I don't want to take up too much time. But our professionals are here if you have any specific questions with respect to anything, really. Yeah, thank you, Council. Can yeah. we, can we uh, just uh, sure. grab your ear for a few? This is a Jason DeGrip. Evening, Jason DeGray, Tool Design. Happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Sure. I know that you guys had some. So. Yeah, last time we were here, the uh, it was going to be 60% one bedroom, 40% two bedrooms, and now Tony Fleming says it's 50-50. Has that changed? Well, that would be for him. But th yeah. this is on the traffic. Okay. He just. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'd have to review the video, but I'm pretty sure it was it was I had conveyed to the board it was always a, it was always 50 50, um, you know so it was 23 two bedrooms and 23 one bedrooms. Uh, if I misspoke, uh, I don't think I would have given the 60 40 um, on on a count, um, but I'm I'm pretty sure that you know it was always, it's always been the, the 23 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, even, yeah. Sorry about that if I, if okay. I misspoke. Do you want to just yeah. have them give a general overview and then we can, if you have right. any questions to ask? So, so the parking? Yeah. Just traffic, traffic. Yeah, I have one question for him. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind, if you mind, Jason. Okay. If you could just yeah. give us just a, sure. give us the highlights because the room didn't hear it. We read the survey, so, okay. um, you know, I think that was the biggest concern that we heard, you know, the last week. So just a basic summary of the yeah, traffic yeah, impact today. Sure. Yeah. So, Tool Design conducted a uh, trip generation assessment. Uh, the, the triggers that would warrant uh, larger traffic studies uh, were not met with the, the program of the, the project development. Um, we coordinated with the city's traffic engineer to understand you know, the interest in terms of what the scope of that undertaking would be. Um, and it was requested that we develop a uh, trip generation assessment, which would be you know, quantifying the amount of vehicular traffic that the site would generate. Uh, in addition to conducting a site distance analysis of the proposed um, access and egress points to the site to ensure they meet the standards for you know, safe access and egress, uh, as well as you know, conducting a site visit and you know, doing a general review of the overall conditions to the area. Uh, we did conduct traffic counts at the intersection um, of Copeland and Furnacebrook, and I just want to make sure I get that date correct. And so those were conducted in May 18th of 2022 uh, while school was in session and ultimately uh, conducting that trip generation analysis, which is a prescribed methodology that's put forth by the Institute of Transportation Engineers that takes into account the type of development and a litany of um, data collection that occurs uh, throughout the country that allows us to essentially extrapolate out uh, what proposed developments would generate for vehicular traffic. Uh, we did that for uh, the development type. Uh, ultimately, the total trip generation for the site, which was vetted and also uh, acknowledged by the city's independent peer review consultant, would be during the morning peak hour, uh, a total of 16 vehicle trips. In the afternoon peak hour, the evening peak hour, a total of 21 vehicle trips. That is the combination of both the entering and exiting traffic at both locations. So at any given location, um, the, the activity would be less than that. Uh, for instance, the exiting traffic in the morning uh, would be 12 vehicles exiting in total from either driveway. Uh, so approximately one vehicle every five minutes. In terms of the entering traffic in the evening, uh, it would be of a similar condition. It's 13, so again, it's be one every five minutes. Um, and that's during the peak hour. That's at the peak hour. Uh, total increase in traffic to the intersections would be one percent or less um, in terms of the total overall, you know, traffic that's passing through the intersection at that peak hour. Um, so the total numbers there are 17 to 1,800, uh, give or take. Uh, vehicles in the hour that pass through that entire intersection. And we're talking total trips that this site would contribute 16 to 20. So it's you know not even a, a, a one percent in the, at least one of those peak hours. The safety assessment for the site distance uh, showed that uh, necessary site distance for either a vehicle that's traveling along the street needing to stop, or a vehicle that's exited uh, the site and in the travel way, as well as site distance for vehicles exiting the site to perceive traffic and execute a uh, acceptable new maneuver are all met um, and all well in excess of uh, those minimum requirements. Um, so essentially that was what our, our assessment stated. Um, and again, that was all put forth to the uh, independent peer review, which essentially uh, acknowledged as well. Appreciate that. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, you, you say 16 cars. 
So what do you contribute that to with the cars that are there? Is it, is it people working home, not working, what is it? Well, primarily the trips being generated by residential development would be trips that are associated with, you know, working back, particularly during the peak hour. Those non-work trips are essentially, primarily take place off the peak hour. So the activity that you see at peak hour are journey to work trips. And I would note that those rates are all pre-pandemic generated. So you're talking at the rates that these sites would develop for um, you know, work trips prior to the, the current you know, state of the pandemic and the hybrid work environment. So are we talking like 18 to 20 now? I don't know. No, it actually would be lower if you extrapolate out what the patterns are seeing uh, post-pandemic. What people are working from home, the strip generation rates are lower. Um, and it was acknowledged by the peer review consultant that our numbers are actually slightly conservative based on what we're seeing uh, taking place uh, nowadays. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, be between four and six o'clock, it doesn't appear to me. I, I go up that section a lot, yeah. and it doesn't appear that there's less traffic than pre-pandemic. So, what I mean, talking about the, what the impact of a residential unit would put, it's not. Uh, no, I know, but yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it. It's I, I, I pre pandemic, I think, but post pandemic, I, I, I'm not buying that. It's too low at well, 46 units. Yeah, I don't want to characterize the, the actual traffic that's at the site, you know, mostly making the point of people are going to and from work less now than they were pre pandemic. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yep, you, you answered one of my questions, which was um, whether there was any change from 10 months ago when you did the report to today. And I think your conclusion is that actually you were, you must be conservative in your numbers. That's correct. Second question I have, I don't know if you can answer it or whether the yeah. architect should, but if you foresee a bottleneck or any kind of backup, where would that be on this site? In terms of <laughs> within the site or external to the site? Well, as the site, as people are ingressing and egressing. I don't see necessarily any circumstances that would, would give rise to concern that's really any different than you know multitude of locations throughout the city of Quincy. Anytime you're looking at a traffic signal, you have queues that are generated with a traffic signal that extend back obviously some distance. Those queues clear during the time that the cycle you know is operating. So you know my concern as the traffic engineer who's you know, practicing this was, is essentially zero. I mean, there's not a condition here that I see that, that really raises any red flags. Um, you know, when there's a, a traffic that's trying to execute a maneuver that's confronted with a queue, you may be storing that vehicle on the site for a longer period of time as the signal kind of works through its progression and the queue's clear and then the vehicle exits. Um, other cases where a left is turning into the site you may have to wait for you know a gap to materialize, but that uh, generally uh, is accommodated in routine conditions at you know countless locations throughout the city and in the region. Thank you. Just, just, just for clarification purposes, the current peak conditions in that intersection are seventeen hundred vehicles, plus or minus. Plus or minus. Per hour. No, at peak, which is different from like ten thirty. If we want to get the exact numbers, yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, peak hour, yeah. Like the, for between one, the rush hour, coming yeah, in right. and going home. Yeah, Three yeah. hour rush hour, six and nine, five, whatever. Right? Whatever, but that's. Three or six. 1,700 cars are in that intersection during the peak hour, yes. which is roughly go to work time and come home. Yes. Okay, and you're going to add approximately 17 in that intersection at that time. Approximately, yes. And technically, could that be handled by retiming those signals if it became necessary? If it became Honestly. necessary, I will say that the city traffic engineer, the, the signal is under you know, the jurisdiction of the Department of Conservation and Recreation. We have coordinated with both with the city of Quincy's traffic engineer and DCR's interpretation, and they are recently retiring that location are very pleased with its current operation. They essentially said they don't want to change it. It's operating as well as they see fit. Um, but theoretically, if something had to happen, yes, it's a you know, simple retirement. And, and you've already been through DCF for your permit for your, for your driveway. That's all, all cleared. Are you going to use an existing driveway just re permit? That I will turn back to the rest oh, right. of the team in terms of you know, interactions with DCR. 
Well, I, I read I read something here that said they were going to cooperate with DCR to make sure that the the drive, you, you have to apply for a driveway permit. Anyway. Well, the, the, the comment was specific towards the operations of the signal in terms of a, a permit requirement for access and egress. I'm, that I'll defer to the rest of the team. In terms of the coordination of the signal operations and their um, comfort level with it, that has occurred, and they are, um, you know, they're approved that they're okay with. They're it. okay with it, and they're willing to make the adjustments should need be. Yeah, the city and DCR routinely, you know, monitor their equipment and will be making those adjustments as necessary, independent of this this project. But you know, down the road, if they do see the, something, that but the project, change, any impact that the project has on them will be accounted for at some point. Right. No. When, when they're doing a traffic count in our yes. an intersection evaluation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh. <clears throat> Any other questions? No, I'm good. Anybody else we want to ask yet? You guys comfortable? I'm fine. I'm okay. good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any uh, other new testimony? No, we got no. a new correspondence from okay. DPW. New correspondence dated February 9th, 2023. We have reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plan showing the layout of utility grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, the submittal package should generally provide a plan denoting the proposed erosion and sediment control practices to be implemented during the construction phase of the project to protect resource areas, and four, please provide a profile view of all proposed buildings to be located in LSCSF. Some form of flow-through foundation should be implemented to ensure that storage of floodwaters is not displaced onto adjacent roadways and properties. Thank you. If you can just have a seat, we're still going through this. Oh, okay. I recognize a lot of that. Good morning. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. That's the next project. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh. Sorry, jump of the gun here. Oh. Oh. Uh, so we took testimony on this uh, back in November, um, but I know we have a newly elected city councilor. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, uh, Mr. Devine? Councilor? Do you want to speak at all on behalf Mr. of the neighborhood? Come on, neighbor, I'm going to uh, say hi to everybody. Huh? Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, clearly, this is a, you know, a very uh, heated with the neighborhood. They feel very strongly that it's too dense. Mm -hmm. uh, almost the majority of people feel that way. Um, a lot of people feel that. Uh, some people reached out about trees. They want to make sure that there's the adequate amount of tree or shrub or any type of wetland type uh, vegetation that can absorb more water. Um, some people have reached out to the fact that um, it's too many single units, that it should be more two, fam uh, two bedrooms as opposed to singles. Uh, some other people have reached out about bicycle um, issues. Uh, since there's supposedly going to be less people not using cars is what we hear, you know, mm -hmm. that they're working from home. Uh, one person said they'd like to see some type of facility that would hold bicycles uh, that would be seasonal to keep them safe and protected. And then uh, as far as traffic, uh, I heard the gentleman here with his uh, statement about, uh, it's a speculation about whether or not it's less traffic. Uh, I'd prefer that we went with facts and if we're gonna talk about uh, traffic studies, we should just go on what the traffic study said, mm -hmm. not on speculation as to whether there's less or more pre or post COVID. And then uh, other people would like to see uh, right hand turns only coming outside of the property so that they're not going across. And also some type of painted box or where they come out so that somebody, if they're taking a right hand turn to get in. They're not obstructed, so we have some signs that says do not block. And uh, I have some other constituent asked me to speak for them, but I'll speak for them at opposition. That's uh, they're opposing. Is that when I would do it? We're, we're not we're not taking any additional testimony because we already heard the testimony on the project. There was no ch changes, so I just I just gave you the opportunity to speak for the neighborhood. You know? Oh, okay, so thank typically you Typically, we don't like, we, we wouldn't take additional testimony at this time, you know? Okay, uh, I appreciate that, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, so some constituents are uh, really upset about traffic and the density of the project. 
If you want to speak about your friend there opposed, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, 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 Veronica Bertrand, uh, mm -hmm. she spoke. She's opposed to it. Um, she was uh, speaking for some of her uh, condominium associates too, and they are saying that you know it went from 42 to 46. She was confused as why it jumped up a few more units, and then also uh, Patricia Mortimer uh, yeah. is against it. I don't know, was it 42 so it was at some the, point? It was after the purchase of the property. I, I, I touched on that since our last neighborhood meeting. Uh, yes, Mr. Veneers had acquired uh, 211 Copeland as well, moving uh, the egress uh, to the site off of Copeland further away from the intersection. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's when, you know. Yeah, yeah, when we added the additional units. So to balance the, the cost, we, we added a few more units yeah, at, at, at that time. She yeah. just asked yeah. me to say that, and yeah. that's sure. I was repeating what she had okay. asked. Yeah. So this is uh, She this is particularly is likes Mr. Bertrand, uh, Bertrand. Uh, you know, he uh, is a friend, but she said she was speaking for other people also. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patricia Mortimer of Rogers uh, Street is also opposed to the density of it. I appreciate it, Council. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. again. Thank you. Um, no, I, would, I would go to that right there, the letter from the DPW. We already did that. Yeah. We already did that. <coughs> All right. Awesome. Council Mahoney looks like she has one. I, Please. I could say a quick thing to the trees. If you, you know, obviously there's a tree ordinance here, which right. we will certainly comply with. Okay. Uh, we do have a tree plan as well, and it's the, uh, the the Furnace Park Parkway driveway and that end of the building uh, are where some trees will be removed, uh, but we have quite a bit of landscape area uh, for the proposed site. You know, so those would would a lot of them will be replaced. We discussed that in the drainage and okay. back in November. Right, right. Yeah. So, yep. thanks. All right. So. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you very much for letting me come up. I think there's a lot of people in the audience that are disappointed that they can't come up and speak because they were at the public hearing that they had. And I want to include also former council person Brian Pamucci was at that public hearing and he spoke against this project because it was too dense and too big. And as we all know, Council Pamucci very really did actually speak out against something. And when he did, I know this board listened. I know he's not an elected official anymore, but I just want to make sure that you understand that he's a Ward 4 resident that was speaking out against the size of this this um, property. I also want to mention that um, over on um, Copeland Street, I believe it was, um, is the gray unit. There was it was approved at the planning board for a much larger, um, much larger um, um, size. And when it came here, this this DBA board downsized it. I think it was approved for eight. And it was downsized to I believe four or five. I can't remember, but it was downsized, even though it was approved at the planning board. So even though they're getting, they're coming up here saying, oh, the planning board thinks it's great, and we, you know, we we did everything they said, and we haven't come back and we haven't downsized in the size of this because we think it's a great development. I want to remind you what the ZBA, all of you, said when they came before you on 11-29-22. It was in the Quincy Sun. It's direct quotes from this board. And they are coming back with the exact same plan. Concerns about the size of the development. Seems like there's a. It seems like a, they've taken back. We were taken back by the size of this development. I'm not quite sure if they're, they're, these are legitimate requests for variances. Um, we don't have a traffic study, which you got. Which I think if we actually go to the date, and I'd like to know the date. What was the date of that traffic study? I'm not sure. Back in May of 2022. What day? Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, typically, it'll be a Tuesday, Wednesday. I can't confirm. So it was a Wednesday, and that's an early release day for for schools. So you know, these are the things that we have to pay attention to. So if we're going to do a traffic study, and we're going to tell you that it's got low impact to it, we're standing in front of you. Everybody thinks it's great. Wednesdays are early release days. It's not a typical day. So I just want to make sure we are aware of that. The green space, um, there's it, there there doesn't seem to be way less green space than there should be. Um, minimum dwelling is less than it should be. It's too big and it's too dense. These are all quotes that came from the ZBA. These are your quotes that I'm quoting to you. Nothing has changed in this plan. The public is not being allowed to come up and speak. When we're talking about the number of traffics and how when you go into the unit, you know, you might have to wait in a queue to get into the units because of the traffic that is there. These are real concerns and we are impacting the people who live in the city. And I appreciate the fact that the person who's developing it was a business person in the city of Quincy. I also, I also frequented the store. But that does not mean when we come before you, somehow we take the rules off the table because they were good business people. These are impacts that are going to happen to our community, and they have to be looked at individually without bias as to who is coming before you. 
this project is too big. Your concerns are real. Your quotes that you had in the paper were yours. They have not changed. They have not brought anything before you to make it less dense. I am concerned with the things that are happening here in the city of Quincy. And we have to be fair about what we're doing. And we cannot say, well, you know, traffic down in other areas is the same way. Zero percent impact to traffic, that is alone should be questionable to everybody that's in this room. We are creating that traffic when we say yes to these variances. I believe that there should be something at that development, at that site, but 46 units are too big. We're before you tonight. What, I, I ask you to do the math, what can they have there by right? I asked the ZBA, can you answer that question for me? No? 12. And that's the math that we should that's be doing. Right. That's the 50, math that we should be doing. 50,000 square feet. No. Divided, by, divided by what? That, that math, uh, no. So I, by it's 6, like 26. Do the math. Thank you. Um, so we, we did let people speak. I want to be clear that the board did allow for testimony. We took testimony in the last meeting uh, in November, and that's typically what we do. When we, when we passed on, there was no material changes in uh, the plans. We asked them to present some additional information, and we took said information. So that is how you know we typically operate. So we're here to make a decision based on the information that we've been presented. So. Opinions. We're not able to speak in support if we weren't able to speak last time at all. No, we're not going to take any additional testimony tonight. Thank you. Um, I can just say quick word. Uh, the traffic report we had in the community meetings, we have raised certain concern and forwards. I, sir, sir, we sir, didn't say anything. Sir, so that, that, that I appreciate it. I don't know your expertise on, on, on a traffic study, so I, we're going to trust what we've been presented here tonight. Attorney Fleming, yes. um, are these condos, last time it seemed to be up in the air whether they're going to be condos or apartments. Do you, you know, has that you know, been a lot, of, a lot of times it's market driven, you know, but certainly uh, it, it's, it's, the intention is condominiums, yes. Thanks. Yep. I thought that was already I don't think they were clear or knew what, what they were looking for. So. Thoughts, opinions? Uh, Ma'am, we've taken testimony. Thank you. I just have a question. Uh, we were not informed about this meeting. This, this, the meeting's been, uh, it's, it's... It's been rescheduled twice, and we didn't get any information get on the So maybe more people were interested in participating. So in November, the meeting was advertised to the, to the abutters list. It was also, a uh, whole mailing was sent. Yeah, it, it has been changed twice. We have, a, we have this letter on the mail, on the mail, and it has been changed twice, this meeting. So pe people that might be interested in participating is not here, and even we don't have chance to to, to speak as you as you mentioned. Again, we've taken Did you testimony. Watch the community meeting because he's changing it is going very differently than it did. Yeah, I, I'm going to ask you guys to sit down. I, yeah, I, exactly. I understand that. I understand that. You know, again. I think we should, we should be able to speak. I, that's 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 not the process I, that we use. So. I will say the council spoke for you all, and he said everyone's against the project. I think he made that loud and clear. Thoughts? Truthfully, I, uh, I think it's an entrance into Quincy, and I really like it. I think that's, that's going to clean up a lot of mess down there, and it is a mess. That is a mess down there, and it looks ugly. When you come into Quincy, we need something there. Whether it be this or not, I don't know, but we need something there that looks nice like that. So that's the way I feel. You guys, everyone's got their own opinion. It's just you come into Quincy and you're going to see that. It's, it's, it's well, I think the amount of traffic there, you're going to spend a lot of time looking at it, whatever. <laughs> Can we hold the applause? Thank you. Uh, the the most benign use of any site is going to be the traffic is going to be residential. Oh, agreed. But how much? No, I know. I mean, it, it only less than one percent, according to the expert. Yeah. 
Yeah, my, I mean, my opinion is that uh, planning has reviewed this thoroughly. We have a traffic study that's been done. I've reviewed every word of it. Uh, had an opportunity to ask the gentleman for any updates or any changes. Uh, there is going to be something there. It should be residential. That should that would be the least impactful use of that site. So uh, this applicant has touched all the bases as far as I'm concerned. Mr. O'Brien. I, I, we, 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 the biggest discussion that we had from the very meeting was the traffic issues. The traffic, the traffic that's there today is the traffic that's there today. Adding 17 cars to 1,700 cars to me seems minimal and nominal. Um, and it can be adjusted by running the signals better. They, if they do that when they do a traffic count to look at it, um, the, the DCR people have looked at it, the city's looked at it, the peer reviewers looked at it, and traffic people tend to be a little geeky. They use numbers based on uh, the, the amount of cars that they expect to be in a place like that. And you know, geeks and numbers, they always seem to work out. Always seems to work out, right? They don't seem to get overwhelmed by numbers. I got it. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 we've seen a lot of projects up here in a lot of dense areas. We got 50,000 square feet. We got parking. We got green space. It's like drainage relief. Drainage relief. You know, the, the impact in the rear, they're elevated. I, I know it's tall. I mean, I went down there and I sat down at that intersection during a busy time trying to figure out. I sat in the parking lot of the light store next door trying to figure out like is this a left hand turn only situation i don't think that or right hand on, only turn coming out of there you know i mean i think that's going to be dictated anyways by just the traffic pattern and people are going to go up and around i, I mean i don't know in you know all the projects we've seen in a long time I, I think they did a lot of due diligence on this one i personally am, am in favor since I've, since I've been on the board, we, we, I think we've approved two or three similar projects. One up behind North Quincy High School, and there's another one down by in the vicinity of Star Market there on one of the corners. Very similar. And, and those were much smaller lots. Right. And the same issue was raised that the traffic would, would strangle it if that's the biggest issue. I, I, I don't see the traffic being a problem after looking at the way the report. I had asked for the report, but we didn't see it. Yeah, we didn't have it. And yeah. that's planning that's, had it. That's why. Yeah. We, that's why I asked to see it. Yeah. And then after reading it, going through, it, I think there's a minimal traffic impact up there for, yeah, for yeah. that intersection. You know, I mean, I know there's some other developments coming down the road. And what could happen? Yeah, something else. You know, but you you're looking at this, and uh, uh, we have to look at it in the vacuum. No, we don't know what the impacts are going to be. I mean, what do you want to do? You want to build single family homes in there? Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. You know? Well, I'll make a motion. Or oh, do you want to make a motion, Marty? Yeah. Uh, our opinion is for a variance finding to demolish the existing structure on multiple properties and construct 46 unit residential. Building on the premises number 1234 to 1244 Furnace Brook Parkway and 211 to 217 Copeland Street. I make a motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Wow. Thank you.
Yeah. 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 There we go. Friend of tonight's agenda on the new business, EBA 235, Kevin Doughty for variance, special permit, floodplain, to completely renovate and construct an addition on the home on the premises number 87 Thornton Street, Quincy. Is the African representative here? Hi, yes, my name is Kevin Doughty. I'm the homeowner. You have the floor. All right, thank you. Okay. Don't forget your address, okay? Yes, yeah, the address is 87 Thornton Street. Thank you. Thank you. So again, my name is Kevin Doty. I'm the homeowner. And uh, high level overview, I'm just looking to uh, add space to my single family home. My family's growing and need more space. Uh, a little bit more detail about this project. It's an existing two story uh, single family house. It's 1,280 square feet. And I plan on building an addition off the back of the house, the inside of the house while also adding a third level and a front porch. And so some of the variances that I'm seeing are, uh, number one, the floor area ratio, that's gonna exceed the 0.40. The front yard setback, which I'm already exceeding, but I'm going to exceed by another couple feet. Where is this? Front yard setback. Oh, the front. Yeah, the front yard setback. My side yard setbacks are already very uh, small. They're like five and a half feet. That's not changing. All right. Um, and then the third thing is the distance between the two structures uh, on the property. I have a detached garage. Mm -hmm. And so I will be uh, slightly less than that 10 foot uh, requirement between the two structures. You don't use the garage for parking, correct? For parking? Yeah. I, I do not. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah, it's going to be a little tight there with the yeah. new stairs. Right. But also that fence is about four feet onto my property line. So oh, your property line? Oh, my neighbor's cool. <laughs> he's, he's, cool. He's, cool with reading. he's cool with reading doing that. If you look oh, at the Oh, is survey, this what you see the metal fence leading back here? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, see yeah. on the survey. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be four feet over. So Three or four, I forget exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you have less property. No, he has more. I have more. But the fence is kind of squeezing me right now. So look, you see this fence line is drawn up here. Yeah. The fence is. This is fence? his property. Yeah. This. That's his property. Not, no, this is. So there's his fence. It's over there. No, yeah. You, you're actually. You're gaining. Yeah, uh, you're, no. He's losing. He's losing. Oh no, because you don't have a list. Of, no, you don't. You have it on this side. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah, this so side. Sorry, it sorry. Yeah, yeah. So you, we don't have the fence showing here, but you have about four feet. Here. Oh, what you fence, see right there. All right. Here. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Why? Three, why, two, three, four. why is that there? Why don't you take? I, it I don't know. I bought the place in 2018. But here's what's going to happen. If that fence stays there long enough, the guy's going to own your property. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Adverse possession. Adverse possession. All of a sudden, you go to move it, and goes, no, that's mine. It's well, been there well years. nothing in this plan has anything to do with moving the fence, so. No, I'm just telling you. Yeah, no, I appreciate How are you? it. So what's going on the third floor? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. Master bedroom, bathroom. Third floor? Yeah. yeah. Third floor. That's just for you. I've hired a structural engineer. I've got stamp drawings, yeah. uh, stamp calcs for everything. So you're going to you're gonna go from a three bed to a four? Or are you two to four? Uh, it's currently, technically, it's a three. So it's three, yeah. Three. Two or four, yeah. Because yep. uh, you're in a floodplain, do you have to... I was just going to say that. Do you have so a basement? I do, but, so, so this is going to be a substantial improvement. Yep, so I'm following, I'm following R322 and the IRC. Yeah. I'm, I'm bringing up the one, filling it. It's only about a foot and a half I need to fill. It's a yeah. match exterior grade. Yeah. Okay. And I'm relocating all the utilities up out of the basement. Okay. Doing all that flood vents going in per code. Which makes sense then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can see that one. It just flipped. Yeah, we don't love the uh, we don't love the you know the height, but you know because of what you're having to do to get out of the floodplain, it makes sense. The height. Just when, when you're you know. 
Well, I'm, I'm working with that 35 feet, and I'm yeah. going right up to it. That's what I mean. I, yeah. You know, I'm actually, the plans are actually, they, they should say six inches below that, because I want to give myself a little bit of a buffer. But uh, the first floor finish, the, the top of the first floor, finished floor right now is 13 feet, 10 inches, okay. mm -hmm. which is a one foot, 10 inches above design flood right. elevation. Um, so I'm in good shape there, the first floor is remaining. So I don't have to elevate the building anymore. Okay. Um, what else? Those are the basics. Yeah. So. Another note, um, I sat on a meeting uh, for the Conservation Commission one week ago today. Yeah. Um, to, uh, because I'm near the marsh, and I filed an yeah. RBA. Yeah. What's the exact measurement between the stairs and, and the uh, garage? In the back there? Yeah. Uh, six feet, four oh. and a half inches. All right. Rough. I have no questions. Any questions? No questions. Mr. Chin? I'm just looking at his narrative. All right. Let me go back. Uh, Mr. Ryan? I'm, I'm finished with that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, the, the question I have is on the variance. You look for a variance? Yeah. It says uh, the only variance is the size of your lot. The size of the lot being too small. I don't know. I think that thing was typed up two months ago. Maybe, maybe it's inaccurate. The, the three things that I'm looking for are the floor area ratio. He's got the front, the front set back. The front set back, and then the less than 10 feet uh, separation right. between structures on property. Yeah. Those are not mentioned in this, this okay. section. Okay. Thank you. The, I'm good at this time. I mean, it's the same one as the other one because he thought it was for him. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, right? You started reading those. I said, oh, you have to read my uh, memo. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? Why is he approaching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, my gosh, I'll show him a bit. Uh-oh, this is the guy with the gun. No. <laughs> I think they're waiting outside happen. for me. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you need, uh, you need a variance from the front. So you don't need anything for the side as we just learned. Right, no, the side's fine. The side just continues. Right. So, uh, because of the marshland, you got to come back there and why you're doing this, correct, you said? Yeah, there's um, I think the original one, one property in from where the marsh begins there. Right. It's on the east east of the book. Back. Should get some nice views from that side. Back. That's why they got that sliding glass door on the very low. What are our findings of facts? Yeah. facts yeah. Marshland, yeah. Topography. It's a little bit special because the truth is brand new. Okay. You can have a seat. Hello, sir, Mr. O'Brien. Yeah, I'm lost. Does anyone want to speak in favor? First call? Second call? Third call closed. I got a letter here from the uh, DPW. It's going to be read in. We have reviewed the submittal for the above reference project and our comments are as follows. One, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, the submittal package should generally provide a plan denoting the proposed erosion and sediment control practices to be implemented during the construction phase of the project to project, protect resource areas. And four, please provide a profile view of all proposed buildings to be located in LS. CSF, some form of flow through foundation should be implemented to ensure that storage of floodwaters is not displaced onto adjacent roadways and properties. Can I address that? No, you don't need to. Hey, you just need to. You need to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to do it if it's approved. Yeah, if and it's approved. Is there approved, anyone who called part of hearing close? Is anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided on this? First call, second call. Third call, closed. It's going to be a beautiful house. I mean, he's, he's doing what he can. He's got, you know, small lot that tight streets. Yeah, tight streets. Marshland. I know it's not easy. I'm all for keeping families in Quincy. Yep. Comments? No, I think it's a nice project. It's a little bit of a tall house on a small lot, but I understand he's going to lose the foundation for the flow crew. Yeah. So he's making a lot of improvements, and uh, I'm in favor. I agree. Have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, in case 
ZBA 23-5 Kevin Doty for a variant special permit floodplain to completely renovate and construct an addition in the home on the premise numbered 87 Thornton Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance and special permit floodplain. Second. On the motion, seeing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Here you go. There you go, on these. I know they're expensive. Thank you. Further on to tonight's agenda. CBA 23-6, Stephen Marinelli. Marinelli for a variance to renovate the front stairs and extend the <coughs> renovated front stairs to create a farmer's porch on the premises number 238 Marlboro Street. Name and address for the record. Name and address for the record. <coughs> Stephen Marinelli, 238 Marlboro Street. You have the floor. Why don't you explain what you want to do or have done or whatever. Um, so my stairs were falling apart yeah. and uh, basically put my foot through the landing. Yeah. Uh, I went to replace some of the boards, found out the stringers were also falling apart. Yeah. There's really no place to put the screws. Uh. So uh, instead of temporarily replacing them, a friend and I decided to fix them permanently. And just because we weren't coming on any further than the original landing, I thought it would be okay to just extend the landing across yeah. the front of the house. That's ignorance on my part to not realize. Some guy showed up. For that. <laughs> Some guy showed up, told me, you can't do that. We had already built the structure, posts in place, everything. Had not put the uh, decking boards down yet. Um, so essentially, I'm just hoping that I can come on no further than the original landing. The step, I mean, they had enclosed before I bought the house in 2018. So I was already encroaching yeah. on the front setback, which tends to be the case in that neighborhood. Right. Um, so yeah, essentially, I'm just trying to extend the landing over across the front of the house. What about where, the farmer's porch? You're going to do that or not? Well, that uh, I just eventually would have liked to put a roof on, yeah. um, and so I'm hoping that we can include that in this variance okay. as well. But totally open, not enclosed, yeah. and, or anything like that. And your buddy got you in this mess, right? <laughs> well, you know, he's uh, he's worked in structural engineering. He's between jobs. I was lucky enough to. Um, have him help me out. And also, I, I was also lucky enough to meet with Jay Duca yeah. before he left to help yeah. me put in all the appropriate paperwork. Uh, I hope I did it right. Jay but, um, <laughs> yeah. Told us she's still okay, yeah. So, I mean, essentially, it's just looking for a place to uh, be able to put my groceries down right. when the rain's right. coming down. Well, no, it, it yeah. looks like you did a nice job so far. It looks really good. It looks really good. Um, yeah, I was thinking of sticking with the um, plywood, but it'd be nice to get some deck boards down there yeah. if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The plywood's yeah. not a good look. I mean, I, I don't mind it. It's really my I just want to know why didn't you finish the temporary stairs so no one falls off in the hole? Oh, the the railings, you mean? I mean, the railings, I, the I, like, I like my, my um, kids to live with a sense of danger. In it's a, sense it's, of it's danger. a dangerous world out there. It's real out there. I hear you. So from now on, it's Mr. Conlon. You can see it. <laughs> We will right, definitely yeah. be putting railings on if, if I'm able yeah. to finish. Them. I have no questions. I don't have no questions. No questions. No, good. You can have a seat. Okay. Is there anyone want to speak in favor? First call, second call, third call closed. I have a letter here from DPW. They have reviewed the above reference project and have no comments. Anyone opposed to my side? First call, second call, third call closed. I'll be voting in favor. It's a good move. I'm in favor. Mistakes yeah. happen. In favor. in favor. That's why they put erasers on pencils. <laughs> you take the final one. <laughs> what they have a button that says delete. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, ZBA 20, sorry, 23-6, Stephen Marinelli for a variance to renovate the front stairs and extend the renovated stairs to create a farmer's porch on the premise number 238 Marlboro Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant the variance. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. 5 0. Further on to tonight's agenda, GBA 237, Patrick Foley, Esquire, for various findings to subdivide the existing lot and build a single family home on the new created lot in premises number 251 and 253 Granite Street. Counselor, you have the floor. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Patrick Foley. I'm the attorney for the proposal at 251-253 Granite Street, which is located in the residential B zoning district of the city. 
I'm joined here tonight by Gavin Driscoll, who's our architect for the project. Uh, this, right now, currently on the property, is a 9,200 square foot lot with a two family home on it. To access the street, it's actually a one way. Um, the applicant, excuse me, the applicant has owned the house since 2017. At that time, it was a blighted property when he bought it. And over the last you know, six years, he's done numerous amounts of work to it to improve it and make it a better, uh, better look um, with all the other homes and the property there as well. Applicants propose to subdivide the lot and create a new 4,595 square foot lot where he is seeking to build a single family home. This single family home will be two and a half, two stories high. It will have three parking spots. Um, the other half of the subdivision where the two family is now, that will become a 4,602 square foot lot. Um, and which is gonna happen is it's gonna create I just want to add, it's going to create a new setback to the right, which will be 14 feet, uh, which will satisfy the 13 foot requirement. It will also uh, cause the FAR to go up uh, from 0 0.40 to 0.51. Gavin, if you just want to go through the drawings. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Gavin Driscoll, and I'm an architectural design. Um, this is the existing block plan here. Um, the existing two-family home is hugged on the uh, west side of the property. Um, this is where we plan to put the of course, single family. Um, this is the um, proposed single family home over here. Um, like Pat said, the existing two-family home will be 4,602 square feet with the new FAR of Central uh, 0.51 with the two parking spaces. Um, there's no work being done to the existing house um, and the um, uh, zone relief is on only uh, zone relief is on the right side which will be the 14 which will uh, be allowable and then also the, um, the size of the lot and also the frontage. Um, the new single family home will be uh, 4,599 square feet. Um, so we have a living space of um, 2,563 with the FAR of 0.56. Um, there will be new water. Five point six. Uh, point five six. Point five six. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, we'll add new water and sewer and all uh, necessary drainage for the new house. Um, the existing driving engines will be uh, will stay the same. Um, we're actually reduce the size of the driveway, um, but we will increase the um, superiors um, by nine hundred and seventy. Uh, the new house will be three bedrooms, two and a half bath, and have twenty eight feet. Um, I'm just going to do the plans quickly as well. Um, uh, on the right side here is the basement plan. There will be a family room in the basement with lots of windows to bring in the natural light. And on the left side will be um, mechanical and storage. On the first floor will be um, kitchen, living, and dining. Um, with a half bath and uh, pantry and washer dryer at 1,100 square feet. And then on the second floor, will be uh, three bedrooms and two baths um, at 824 square feet. And then these are the elevations. Um, the top one tank corner is this uh, front elevation of uh, uh, facing the uh, street. Um, this is the left side that will be facing the parking, uh, the rear, uh, rear elevation, and then on the east uh, side here will be the right elevation. What, you have asphalt, like, show me where That's the asphalt is. Right? How would you get it? <coughs> the asphalt is only in the, uh, this is the existing driveway here. Okay. Um, and we're actually reducing the size of the driveway. What's your parking uh, on? Which would be here, which it has the four spots. So you get a shared driveway? It will be a shared driveway, yeah. The existing uh, driveway will stay the same. Sure. Each one will have two spots. And why why do you uh, why is that house so big when you get you got a nice size lot there? I know you barely got two frontages if you're on a corner. And you're ten feet off off the sidewalk. I mean you got all that room. I, I just to me it's like you know, and it, I don't know, it's just had a big place to work with, and, and, and you kind of took every advantage of every every little spot. So I have no questions. Hey, you're up. Any questions? Um. 
you know, you want to split the land, I get it, but you got a 4,500 square foot lot. Let's build a house compatible with a 4,500 square foot lot and bring yeah. the setbacks back a little bit and bring it in. A little, little help for the neighborhood. I don't no like to see it right away either. That's like, you know, it's like you're, you're cramming it in when you, when you figure out something. I, I just don't like it. I could buy it. I just don't like it. You got a, you got a, you got a house there you want to build, make it a house. A little small house, it's okay. It's a house. Existing house is a single family? Existing house is a two family. Two family. Existing house is a two family. Yes. I got no question. Oh, we wouldn't let it. I have a big house, small lot. In a way, you could compress it. So we can talk to the applicant about it? Yeah. Council, so the, <clears throat> the existing is going to stay two family? Yes. And you only had a one family? Yes. Yes. Okay. Why are you bumping that out and forcing <coughs> to use the everybody to use the same driveway? Couldn't you? Because well, this just gives us a little bit trying to reduce the amount of asphalt by, by keeping the same entrance, it just, it reduces the amount of asphalt on the site so that they both can use that. And we yeah, but then you got to create a right-of-way over yeah. the existing driveway to let them cross the property all the time. Fights and people you, know, fighting you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree, yeah. I, I think that I mean, there's enough room to turn around that there'd be something in the easement that they wouldn't be allowed to block the driveway. Um, I mean, we could definitely take a look at it to see um, I mean, if you just made two two parallel driveways with a line down the middle, with the property line down the middle, and then you could put something in there other than asphalt. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could you could look at that instead of creating all the all the legal. Yeah. And you could avoid stuff. that mutual use. Yeah. 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 You know. You know. My brother just went through it. That's that's you the only reason that. I see it. You know what I mean? Knock it down, put it in a triple down. Yeah, those <laughs> he did just do a lot of work. Too. He, did yeah, uh, he did. He yeah. put the guy right off. Yeah. So I think I think you got. Is that what you're saying? Like separate driveways too? Yeah, two yeah. Uh, two separates. Pavings. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. The big issue was opening the, the driveway opening on a corner like that. You know, well, I mean, what, I mean, the, conceptually, like, wouldn't you want your driveway on that outside anyways? I would. For, for, from that single family home, because right. the only access is from Granite Street. It's a one way. Right. right. That's what like, I mean. why would you? Why would you? Yeah, I, sure. I don't know. I, I would try and find a way to, you know, that solves his problem if you can move it over too, because mm -hmm. he doesn't want you right on the street line. You know, I mean. Did you guys look at that at all, or did you, we try? No, we definitely can take it. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then you can put pavers in there or something to, try to, to reduce the asphalt. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're building new house, dress it up. I mean, the whole corner's asphalt already. Huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I said the I whole know. corner's asphalt. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I know. And Just take it out. Thing. I know. It would, it it would stick out. It would look nice. Yeah. Yeah. It would. It would look nice, right. Trying to put the driveway on the other side, move the house back. Do you want to uh, have yeah. them come back or take testimony? Uh, well, it's going to be a different house when they come back, so we'll do it all again. Uh, we'll put it off. Uh, they need a month? Yeah. Month? Yeah. Yeah. What's, the, uh, what's the April here? What's the date on that? It's, it, you'll be recovering from the marathon. No. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should come the day after. I guess yeah, the, 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 the day after, after the marathon. I'll come up here with the day after the marathon. No, no. no. I, think what's, I think it's the week before. What's it? Uh, the, uh, is it April? Is it one April 4th? Is it? What are the April dates? Listen, I wonder their April dates. Uh, I'll come here with a nice one, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you wear your running shoes on your way over. 18th? <laughs> We're rollerblades this year. <laughs> Gotta get everybody from the marathon. It'll take them a week to recover. Yeah. <laughs> quick recover. <laughs> quick recover. Probably run one every day. Look his at age, quick yeah. recover. <laughs> he gets down and they suck them so all. They, they get the marathon. Marathon. 17th. <laughs> no, they go. Yeah, 17th, 18th, oh, whatever that one is. Yeah, so 18th would have been good for Council Foley. Yeah, so that might be a recovery. <laughs> April 18th, does that work? No. Yeah, we'll be here, that's fine. We'll be here. Oh, look at him. He's <laughs> running the marathon on the 17th. That's what we're we'll be here. That serious. Oh, I thought you were kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. I am. Yeah. yeah. 
So you want to go? Uh, we'll do the 18th. That's fine. He'll suck it up. All right. Well, 18th. Well, Hopefully it comes in crammed. He'll be a little stiff when he comes 18th. in. 18th. That's why the whole window will show up. Oh, yeah. I have a whole list from the DPW here. They want to know all this, but it's going to be changed, and we're going to have to send it back in. But we'll read this into the record anyway. Sure. Uh, February 10, 2023, ZBA 23-7. Specify, one, specify how much impervious area will be increased due to the development. Two, provide plans showing the existing site conditions, layout of utility, grading, drainage, and the construction details. Three, explain how the surface runoff will be discharged and treated. Four, provide dimensions and grades for the paving area and all driveway entrances. Five, the house number for the new house cannot be 253 Granite Street. <laughs> Six, upon completion of the project as built plan, showing all utilities and building footprints need to be submitted along with the digital file. Thanks, Council. Yep, we're we're going to move that. But is so there anyone the here home. that was going to speak in that case against it? Or for it? Well, for it wouldn't matter because there's going to be a better plan that's going to come. Gonna say for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's it's going to be a better plan when it comes back. It's going to it's going to look better for the neighborhood and brought over and yeah. separate driveways, separate Shoot homes. Shared driveway is not a good thing. It just really isn't. It looks ugly. All right, we're going to move that to the, the 18th road. if we can, April. Mr. Chairman, ZBA 23-7, Patrick Foley, Esquire, for a variance finding to subdivide the existing lot and build a single family home on the newly created premise number 251, 253, Granite Street, Quincy, and make a motion to grant that to April 18th. Mm -hmm. Second. April 18th. 18th. 17th. It's Monday. That's the yeah. marathon. Yeah. Yeah. April 18th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, April 18th. Anybody want to bounce? Anyone want to bounce? There you go. I mean, I will. Huh? Come on in. You're in. All right, Brian. See you guys. See you. How's it going? Him will tell you. I would have took it. I said, out of here. He's an older fella. He needs to sleep. Yeah. The older fella needs to sleep. There you go. All right. I've got to read all that stuff. Further on to tonight, CBA 23-9. Victoria Wong for variance to subdivide the existing site into two parcels to construct two new townhouses style residential units on the newly created parcel on the premises of number 9 Baptist Street. The applicant that represents council, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, for the record, my name is Edward Fleming. I'm here on behalf of Victoria Wong, who's with me here tonight, uh, as well as Mark Sullivan uh, from uh, Chu Design, uh, who's the architect on this proposal, as well as Chi Man from Hardy Man, who's a site engineer. As you indicated, this is property uh, located at 9 Vassal Street, um, and it's on the North Quincy Wollaston kind of uh, border, I would say. Um, uh, Victoria has a uh, has a property under agreement subject to this um, relief or uh, permitting uh, that she's seeking tonight for the nine Vassal Street property. The property is a 10,376 square foot parcel as it exists today and it's improved by a two family that sits on the far left side of the property. It's only about three feet from the from the left Excuse side property second. line. Yeah. Could you guys talk outside please? You'd be a step. Hey guys, what you can thanks. Hear. Thank you. So it's about a 10,376 square foot parcel of land, and it's improved by a two family that sits on the far left side of the site, only about three feet from the left side property line, uh, leaving essentially the right side of the property open um, um, as it stands today. Um, the existing two family actually parks on a, a driveway that comes off of Vassal Street. Um, and it's parked actually on the old section of Vassal Street where the, the roadway at one point in time was to go straight. Right. However, when, when the roadway was built, they, the city took additional land and they curved it to the right. right. Um, however, they never abandoned the, private, the public way that sits in the front of the site. So the existing three family had a parking, had a, basically a driveway and cars, cars would park haphazardly in the driveway. There was no line spaces right. for the, for the right. uh, parking. Um, I don't know how to shut off my, my Apple. phone. Apple. No, this is Apple. my phone. I can't, I don't know. Sorry about that. Um, 
The applicant is proposing to subdivide the existing 10,000 square foot parcel, creating a, a, what I'd call lot A, which is uh, for the existing two family house of about 4,861 square feet, and a secondary parcel uh, I'd call lot B of 5,603 square feet. And then construct a new two unit uh, townhouse style condominium building on the, the secondary parcel. Um, in addition to that, um, the proponent is, is, is actually creating a much clearer and wider driveway that will now service both the existing two family and will provide for parking in the rear, lined parking spaces in the rear of that site for four parking spaces, and a secondary driveway that will service the new two family, uh, that will, uh, the new two unit building that will service, uh, that will provide parking under the building for two vehicles for each unit. The building was designed in a fashion, and Mark will talk about this in more detail, that it's very narrow in, in, in style, but, long, but, it, it, but it has the length that would provide the living area for the property, and it will provide three stories in total height. But essentially, the first floor will provide the parking for the two units, and then there's two additional parking spaces for visitors in the end of the driveway. Um, as I said, it's a three-story building. Um, and Mark will go through the, the details of the floor plans in a second. I won't go into that right now. Um, as I talked about that triangular piece of land in the front, and um, it really can only be shown, it's really kind of right in this location. Uh, Vassal Street was actually supposed to go straight, um, and then the, built, the city built it in the fashion that it is. But this area here is all green essentially green space right now, and it will forever remain that same way. So it's almost like an additional front yard for these properties, mm -hmm. um, because the city has no intentions of ever building that roadway in that location, and nor have they really even abandoned the public way. The public way still stays there. Hence, is, is still providing 50 square feet, or 50 feet of frontage for each of these lots uh, that allows access across that triangular piece uh, into, into the site. Um, that the area um, is, uh, or the neighborhood, I should say, is, is uh, surrounded by other multifamily buildings, two families, and to, the, and to the right of this property is a five-family building that's set back a little further from the site. I think it's a brick uh, five-family building. So it's, it's, it's very, um, it's this, this particular proposal is very consistent with the makeup of the neighborhood. We are seeking variances, however, uh, from the zoning, from the dimensional requirements of the ordinance, and also the parking requirements of the ordinance, and, as well as the paving, so that we can it can allow us to actually add a driveway of this of this size to service both of these properties, as well as the parking in the rear of the site. Uh, so we're seeking dimensional relief from number of provisions, including lot size, FAR, minimum lot area per dwelling unit. Um, what we did with the buildings when, we, when they were designed is that we designed them to, to sit closer to the front of the abandoned section of the public way. Sitting them back even further, like the five family, really would have looked odd in comparison to the other homes in the neighborhood. So we're seeking frontage um, relief as well, front setback relief as well. Um, and then the paving and the parking setbacks really for, this, for the new parking lot that's shown in the back. So, uh, Chi would, if I could ask Chi to kind of show you the plan, the site plan a little bit more clearly, um, and and if you have any questions about engineering, Chi can certainly address those, and then we'll ask Mark just to kind of walk through them. The plan. So good evening. My name is Chi Man from Hadi Design Group. Engineers on this project. Um, just sort of walk over here. So Speak up a little so everyone can hear. Thanks. It's calm enough so we can see. We're out again, old. That's all right. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> So the entire lot encompass like the area outline. So this is a proposed subdivision line to create what we call parcel and parcel B. Existing building is staying where it is. Um, as Ed mentioned, there's a paving parking area out on the street. I want to mention the actual property line is uh, front page is out here where the street line is actually the curb line. Yep. So, you know, from the actual right. sidewalk, the street line to the, to yep. the building is actually a mm -hmm. clean space in between. Uh, 
and, and the front side back in three point six ten of the neighboring mm -hmm. uh, houses, like the building right next to it, only that three foot setback yeah. from the street line. Yeah, it's all the way down the street to yeah, that. In comparison, right. we have more setback on the street itself, but, you know, mm -hmm. because of the front, yeah, uh, the parking line itself further back. And um, as Dad mentioned, this is a five unit uh, building. Right back here is a uh, four unit building. Being worked right in the back is a um, two, two unit building. And along the, the, the neighborhood is, uh, you know, why why do you put it seven feet from from a five family house? Uh, it's just the layout of the lot that we want to have comfortable, you know, driveway to No, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's all paved. It looks like the whole yard is paved. Yeah. Well we have we have a big, you know, uh, green area in the back. I think what, and I think in addition to that, all I'd say is that, as I talked about that green space in the front, I know it's not part of this parcel, but it, but it, it's, it's, it's I think a very unusual circumstance, and hence why the variances are being requested because that essential green space out front, that triangular piece, is almost as if this it's it's part of this parcel, and and it provides that additional green space. So you're not um, paying taxes on it. Well, that's, that's even better, right? <laughs> that's yeah. even better. Also, also want to point out, and, and I believe it's I believe it's eleven more, more than eleven feet off the property line, the, the brick building, right? You you identify yeah, that. Yeah, the, the brick, the brick so, building. So, yeah, so you get eighteen instead of like twenty six, or even twenty four. Right. Which which. But still, is substantial. These, I see that driveway going into the five units down the back. Right. Where do they park? Is there another way to park to get in there in the back of that building? I'm not sure. No, I don't know. Huh? That. I don't know There's that. Another, I, I could, it's, I say it's, it's, it's random parking back there. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's really a weird place. So on um, like the city assessments now, it showed the driveway coming back to the rear of the park that you have the pavement. But I mean, you got a big giant driveway there. But and that's the other big thing. giant driveway and hold the whole thing here. I mean, we got to do something with this. Oh, is it there? The upline show and you're taking the existing driveway out. Right? We're going to take the existing yeah. driveway out and we'll replace it with a new driveway, right? But see what it is. They got the. They got it. I mean, you're like seven feet from yeah. the building. I mean, I don't know. In reality, seven feet from the property line. Yeah, and, and, and then it's after the building, it's all tied. The whole, the whole lot is tied behind even the other whole building. It's like massive, you know. Yeah. And it, again, that that other one is the parking in there is so random. Oh, it's crazy. crazy. I, it's that, the pavement yeah. on our site is not behind the building. It really just goes. It goes along the back. It just goes so straight long. down. It essentially goes straight down here, and it provides additional parking spaces in the rear for yeah, this, actually, yeah, visitor yeah, spaces. Yeah. But it only st it doesn't go behind the building. I thought it went behind the building. Oh no, it doesn't go behind the building. Behind the existing building. So the way it's it goes that behind the existing building, proposed parking. The, it goes proposed behind the parking. existing building. That's so right. what, what's this coming? What's all that? No, that's, I'm sorry. I was I, I was uh, I thought you were talking about the new oh, home. The, the no, no, no. You're going you're going to take the whole back well, of the are, old home. We are creating well because we're creating parking that didn't. The the parking that exists today, Mr. Akins, essentially is random parking in that driveway on the public way. Right. It's but that's on the that's because there's ten thousand square feet there. There's an extra piece of extra piece of road there. I get all that. But really, look look at look at this pavement. That's like absurd. It's really, really, I mean, you change that to pavers and, and you've changed the whole lot. Now it looks, and I know it's expensive, but, but time, there's oh. nowhere for the water to run here. Where's, where's it going to go? Up here and in this corner. You got that front and this corner, and that's it. Well, right that's now there's no, there's no drainage controls. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the drainage. But you don't, you don't need them. You got one little house over there. But, and there's a five family if they need something over here. There's nothing in back that you would need. I, I see all the drainage controls you got. I see what you're putting in there. Mr. Akins, we could certainly, we could, yeah. I can certainly talk with my client about um, about converting that to pavers or some some type of system like that. That's that would make me pervious. make me vote for this because this here okay. is just like way too much time. Even the building, I, I mean, it's it's over and everything. But if we could put some stuff there to mitigate 
water is going to go somewhere. They, they would be willing to do a paver system for that, for a portion of that driveway or parking area in the back uh, that you're talking about, or, or even the whole thing. I, I don't know that we need to do the driveway in pavers, but maybe in the back um, to, to improve the drainage controls. That's a, but that's agreeable. Mm. I know. That's a lot of space. And even this, that's a lot of time. It's a lot because there's nothing there now. It's all grass. It's oh, nice. It's mean. pretty. Right. I know. So let them finish. I just want to know if that was all fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think they designed some type of uh, permeable paper parking system. So mm -hmm. one half will run into the parking area and go straight back into the grass. And that ties right into our underground recharge system. That would definitely improve the drain. Well. So if I could have Mark uh, Selber just kind of walk through the, the plan so you can see the Good evening. My name is Mark Sullivan from Jew and Company Architects. Address? Yeah, right. Oh, I'm sorry. One, one Billings Road. Thanks. Quincy. Uh, so just to get a quick look at just the front of the new proposed two family, um, it, it will be a townhouse style design um, with one unit being in the front, one unit mm -hmm. being in the back. Uh, we'll go a little bit more into the floor plans here. Uh, so going across the board, uh, Salt Street is on the front here. Yep. Um, this is the ground floor plan. As mentioned, we have two car garages for each one of those townhouse units. Um, we put um, office space as well as mudroom um, and more living space towards the front of that house design so that you're not seeing necessarily windows going into a parking garage or anything that mm -hmm. would be kind of unpleasant for the street. Um, the second floor for both of these townhouses, they are just mirrored on each other, so same thing towards the back. Um, the living space, dining space is on the second floor, and then both of these um, two 2,000 square foot units are three bedroom units, um, and all the bedrooms are located on the top floor. Um, to give you an idea of the elevations, so as I mentioned, they're mirrored from front to back. This would be you view on the South Street, uh, looking at the front. So like I mentioned, we try to create more living space on the front of the the street side instead of having a necessarily a garage. Um, this is the rear, exactly mirrored, front um, porch entry to mirror what's going on from the left and to the right on the neighboring properties. These are the two side elevations. So this is the north elevation facing the um, facing the new proposed driveway. Um, just two garage doors, they're just double wide doors um, for two cars to enter. Um, and then this is facing the south, uh, which is within that seven foot setback area. Um, in terms of materials, we, we would be looking to use uh, high quality fiber cement um, to characterize, similar to what's there in the Pretty built. It really is pretty built. Yeah. I like I like the looks of it. Just worrying about time. Any questions, uh, Mr. Franco? No. Mr. Hamlin, Mr. Chin, Mr. O'Brien. No, I'm good for now. Thank you. Anyone like to speak in favor? First of all. Second call. I would like to at this time sure. on the street to just yeah. provide the, uh, a letter of support that's been signed by a number of neighbors uh, in, or in the community, about 20, 23 neighbors in total signatures. Uh, just people, not necessarily on Vassal Street directly, yes, but right in, in yep. that particular um, smallest yep. in Northwood. Yep, right in buildings all around there, yep. Them into the record. Uh, and yeah. it's just one, it's really just one one letter in, in support, so it's just that top front letter. Yeah. Uh, if you want to go quick, how many how many total and it was about 20, the addresses? I think there were about 23. Just a quick, just a quick, like, 
there were some duplicate signatures in there because I think some property owners, you know, yeah. their own number of different properties signed it yeah. more than once. 23. 23 people signed in favor from Basel Street. Go ahead. Uh, 23 people in favor residing Vassal Street, Billings Road, Vane, Hancock Street, Albion Road. I read that one. Billings, Freeman, Mordain, Freeman, Tyler, Muirhead, Oxenbridge, Ransom, and Willett Street. All right. All in favor. Is there anyone else want to speak in favor? Second call, third call, call up. Part of the hearing close. I have a letter here from the DPW. We read into the record. Case number GPA 23 99 Vassal Street. We reviewed the submittal for the above reference project, and our comments are as follows. One, this section of Vassal Street was repaved in 2020. There is a five year moratorium for any digging on this section of Vassal Street. We will not issue any street opening permit until 2025. Two, provide plans showing the layout of utility. Three, confirm the ownership of the triangular parcel in front of the proposed development. Provide documentation that the applicant has the right to develop dig on the parcel. Four, install survey monuments to delineate the subdivision. The monuments shall be set by a professional land surveyor. Further information is required, please advise. Thank you. Call it part of the hearing close. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Opposed or undecided? Second call? Third call, call it part of the hearing call. I mean, really, I, I, I know it's a cost and it's a little cost, but for that amount of open space, I really would want pavers there. I wouldn't be But I would otherwise. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty building. I think it did a great job in the building. I just, for the neighborhood, I think we got to cut back on all that pavement. Yeah, just and looking at the picture, the building's pretty and yeah. you can land a helicopter in front of it. Yeah, and, and, and my, as I indicated, my client is willing to do a paper system, and we'll work with Chi to design an appropriate paper system okay. on that proposal. Coming in, shrink it all. It's all going to be pavers, right? If that's if that's what you desire, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I desire. <laughs> <laughs> we Any comments? The parking area for your paper is high maintenance yes. for the driveway. I, so. I think it'll look. If you're going to do it, do it right. Put in pavers, make it a nice system, make it look nice. You know, you got a big strip of tower is ugly. It's really ugly. A beautiful building like that. You know how nice those pavers are gonna look. I can already picture it. It's gonna be gorgeous. You're gonna do a great job. I know you are. Comments? Oh, they want to guys. No, I'm I'm in line with you. You do uh, paver that all out so it looks nice and pretty and mm -hmm. Then the building will go along with it and good to go. Yeah, I agree. Papers look great and you'll probably get more for the project. Mm. I'm in favor of the condition. Likewise. Can we have a motion, please? In the matter of Victoria Long, 9 Vassal Street, Quincy, ZBA 23 9, move the, the board approve the variances being requested with the condition that. All of the hard top, flat top tar be replaced with a paver system. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? All right. right. Opposed? So moved. Thank no, you sir. Thank, Thank you, Council. Congratulations. Thanks guys. for getting that done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Further on uh, tonight's agenda DBA 2310, Lancaster Street LLC, for variance to remove the existing commercial warehouse structure and pavement and construct two townhouses totaling four units on the premises number 1315 Lancaster Street. Counselor, you hey. Up. hey, I know you. <laughs> the whole day. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that you I was first, but apparently you decided you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no pavement. What's what we want now? Um, thank you again, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Edward Fleming. Again, uh, on behalf of Lancaster LLC and Mr. Michael White, its manager, I'm joined tonight by Brian Donahue, um, uh, who is the architect on this proposal, and Cameron Campbell from the Cell Burke Sala Engineering, who did the, the site work on this matter. Uh, this is a this is zoned Residence B. I don't know if you had a chance to drive by, but if you did. <coughs> 
you saw something that really just didn't fit in the neighborhood. Um, this property, uh, how it was developed and how it came about, I don't, I don't know the history of it, but it's, this, this property's been essentially a warehouse style building in commercial use in an otherwise small residential neighborhood. Um, uh, the, the buildings are quite large in, in scale. You can see them as highlighted in gold on the plan. Uh, this, is, this encompasses two different parcels of land known as 13 and 15 Lancaster. Um, as you can see, the, the larger of the two structures um, basically encroaches over the property line onto the neighbor's property line as well. So there's essentially no setbacks at all. And if you thought there was a lot of paving on the last project, if you drove by this one, you'd see that this entire property is, is filled with either building or pavement. Um, my client, actually, um, Mr. Michael White, has utilized this property most recently for his own business. He had an in, um, uh, a sprinkler business, essentially, an irrigation system business, and he had all his supplies and his trucks and other things that utilized the property because it was a pre-existing non-conforming commercial use. Mm -hmm. Prior to him, there had been other commercial uses of the property, again, with numerous vehicles, trucks going back and forth in that small residential neighborhood. He didn't like that. I, you know what, I'm surprised that I never heard about complaints, but when I spoke with the counselor about this, uh, Councilor Andronico, yeah. he was thrilled uh, that this was a proposal to right. finally convert that site, and, um, and he didn't believe that there would be really a lot of concern in the neighborhood, because mm -hmm. I talked about a neighborhood meeting with him, um, but he was, he was very supportive of the proposal. So what we're seeking to do tonight is essentially uh, utilize those two uh, properties and construct a new residential development on the site consisting of four residential units, um, two, two, uh, two each, uh, two, two buildings and with um, two units in them, with parking under and, and, um, and residential above. I'll let Brian talk about those uh, properties in more detail in a moment, but maybe uh, cameras, while you're there, if you want to just walk, kind of walk through the site and just show them uh, those aspects of the site. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Cameron Campbell with the Suburb Sala at 1266 Ferrensburg Parkway. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, as you said, the entire site is, is essentially paved now, mm -hmm. and the new development proposes to reduce the pavement by about 33%, which is pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have the two new buildings parallel to each other, and you'll have come in on a 18 foot driveway where it opens up to. 24, where you can, so you can so maneuver your cars. Right. And then you have the two, so you have two parking spaces in each garage for each unit, and then additional guest parking in the rear, one space per building. And the site now all slopes to the rear. And we're proposing to keep it that way, and essentially put like a catch basin at the rear of the property and feed it into an underground system. Right now, it all goes to, there's a catch basin at one of the buildings, but it's all plugged up. I believe it's just a dry well, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not really sized to handle the amount of payment that's on the site. Yep. So this will meet all the state standards. There's an existing retaining wall at the rear and the existing garage in the back, the foundation acts as a retaining wall. We're gonna remove the building and rebuild it. Mm -hmm. And bring in a two inch water line, one inch water line to each building, new sewer for each building, all tying into the existing utilities on my guess. Yeah. Oh, so is that the hardship on this? Is the, is the, the bottom tree of the land in the back? The hardship is on this is that and, and, and the existing the pre-existing right. use of the site. Yeah. Uh, and Cameron did a great job, by the way, because uh, uh, Chen issued a letter as he always does mm -hmm. when he reviews these proposals. But Cameron responded to him promptly, yeah. and I believe the letter you have from Chen indicates that all the issues that he concerns that he have fully addressed as well. I just wanted to highlight that, and I was uh, appreciative of, of Cameron getting on that as well as he did. Yeah, this came in March 3rd. The last one was February 10th with the whole list. Yeah. And uh, March 3rd, we have no concerns. Brian, do you want to just walk through the building? Do you have any, any questions of this? Drainage or anything? Anyone? No, no, I'm good. Okay. <coughs> Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Brian Donahue, uh, Donahue Architects, 21 McGrath Highway <coughs> in Quincy. Um, Cameron did a very good job of describing the, the, uh, the change from the existing conditions to the new to the new buildings. Um, what we have is four units with uh, two bedrooms, <coughs> two bedrooms and a bath and a half for each um, for each unit. Um, there are approximately 1,700 square feet per unit, uh, including garage, uh, because you really need to include the garage area for um, the square footage calculations. Um, just in general, the nature of the of the of the street, Lancaster, is a predominant of one to two family homes, and a lot of the lots are actually smaller than half of this site. So I think we, it's a it's a four unit um, uh, development, but I think it fits into the character of the neighborhood. Don't want to go into too much detail on the layouts. Fairly straightforward, simple counter design with uh, two cars parking under. Um, we do have we do have two guest spaces um, designated behind the building, so we have two uh, two uh, parking spaces per unit plus two guest spaces. And they can that. park in front, really, almost if they wanted to. The garage door, right? Right, right. And there is actually street parking is available. So um, the buildings are actually uh, 32 feet apart. So there's significant room to, to back in and out because sometimes right. the townhouse bill is a little bit too, right. too tight. So there's room to negotiate. Um, we've got uh, side yards, 13 feet for each unit, so they can have a little bit of outdoor space. And then the rest of it is developed as, as green area. These are just the layouts. So again, it's uh, garage floor, uh, two bedrooms on the top level. So what we've done is orient the buildings towards the street. So the, it will present on Lancaster Street as uh, the short end of the building um, with a facade that we're trying to treat as a, the face of a single family house. So these are, this is the unit from the garage entry, so we've got a double car garage for each unit, and these are mirror, mirror images of each other, so it's really good identical. So um, I went over the square footage, the height of the building is 31 feet, which is below the, the requirement, so. Yeah. Um, we think it's an improvement, obviously, over the commercial building. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, hope you, uh, very nice. Look at it favorably. Thank you. So, uh, any questions, board members? First. No questions. All set. Is there anyone want to speak in favor? Anyone want to speak in favor? First uh, call. I'll speak up. You'll speak up. Johnny, I knew he couldn't stay quiet. I knew. I knew. I was only going to pick one of his cases. <laughs> Although all Attorney Fleming's cases were great tonight. Um, but no, this is good. This is good new growth. Um, you know, those are going to be worth, um, I don't know, they're probably not going to be worth a million each. That, that first one, those are going to be worth a million each, that last case. But those probably be about $750,000 each. So that's good new growth. We need the new taxes. Um, that's a very dense area to begin with down there. So um, I'm sure that um, they have to go to planning on this. This is four units, right? We, you know, we have a waiver for second yeah. review. Oh, size. even better. Goes to show how great of attorney attorney farming is. But um, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Is he doing work for you pretty soon? <laughs> <laughs> I think he works for a lot of times. Does anyone else want to speak in favor? <laughs> Second call, third call, call out part of the hearing call. We got a letter here from uh, EPW and others. It's dated my third. They had a lot of concerns about what they wanted and they were all addressed. So the applicant has uh, done everything that the DPW has asked them and there's no comments. Everything's done. Is there anyone opposed or undecided? Please step forward, name and address for a record, please. Good evening. Um, my name is Tony Chen. I live at 74 Edward Street. Um, I, um, what was your address? 74 Edward Street. Okay. Which is adjacent to the yep. property yep. That's, that's being in, in question here. Um, I've, my family's lived there since 1997, mm -hmm. 96, uh, raised three kids there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm opposed to this variance for a couple of reasons. One, I think, has to do with the zoning law itself. Mm -hmm. um, the lot is just too small to support four units. 
Um, but the, uh, the second reason is that it's personal because it has a direct impact toward my family. Um, so the lot uh, in in reviewing this uh, application, the lot size um, is listed as 8,186 8, square feet. Uh, the current, my understanding is the current requirement uh, for per unit is 4,000 square feet. So this is uh, roughly half the size of what the law requires. Mm -hmm. um, also for the, for the uh, setbacks, the law requires 25 feet. Uh, the proposed setback is 12 feet. Again, half, 50% of what the law requires. Um, it's, it's just too small. Um, on a personal level, um, I, I oppose it because there's, um, there's an expected uh, negative impact, environmental impact toward my um, property. Currently, we share, um, we share a property line about 25 feet. Mm -hmm. My backyard um, leads there, the back of their property. On the left side, there's like a, a chain link fence. Are you close to the fence? Is your house close to the fence? No, no, oh. but, but that's the back of my yard. Oh. So, so of that 25 feet or so of property line, uh, there's a, this, on the left side, there's a chain link fence about eight, eight, feet, eight or nine feet uh, long. The rest of it, there's no independent fence um, separating the two property. What separated the two property is the side of this commercial building, which is pretty massive. Um, I think it's approximately um, 30 feet long, about over 15 feet high. Okay, it's a concrete structure. And I'm concerned about the demolition of this the structure because in, in doing so, first you're going to remove the fence, but it's going to create a lot of debris, a um, lot of pollution, noise, water runoff, all of that's going to spill into my, my yard. Now, they're, they're, if any work that's done, they're going to put up so it do not go in your yard. Yeah, um, I'm concerned. Um, the, the, uh, the, the Lancaster um, property is sloped. So the water drains into, yeah, drains into right. our property and my neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in removing this uh, big structure, I think it's just gonna create a lot more drainage into our property. Aren't you redoing that wall in the back? Uh, the, I believe the fence, there'll be a new fence that will run along the back of the property line, right. but the drain, the new drainage system that's being designed is gonna, gonna catch gonna, it all. It's gonna catch all that water. And, right. and the one that's there now doesn't it operate. Doesn't work, right. So, I mean, in, in summary, it's just that it's too, the lot is just too small for four, four units. And then also the direct, the direct negative environmental impact to my family as well as to the, the, the neighbors whose property is adjacent to this. I think it's just too great. And so I um, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Anyone else? Pose one aside. Good evening. Um, Richard Ash, I'm the president of the Ward 2 Civic Association, mm -hmm. uh, address 14 Mount Street. Um, I spoke with some, while I'm not in the direct vicinity of this property, spoke with some of the neighbors. I don't think there's any uh, dispute that it's a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think most of the most of the homes over there are two floors uh, and not three. So that was the primary concern that this is three floors and four units. Um, I won't rehash everything that was mm -hmm. just said, but uh, in addition to the drainage and the parking, I wanted to actually see if we could uh, look at the parking again, Ed, if you don't mind. Six. I got a little confused by where the spots are going to go. There'll be two spots in the, in the garage. Each unit has two spaces on the garage. I mean, in the building. In the building. Yeah. So you have two car garages at each, on each, each building. Unit. So the first floor of the building is all garage. And then you have two guest spaces at the rear of the building. The first floor is garage. Gotcha. Yeah, you get two spots in each. 
plus two extras, plus what they need in the park in front of the, on the designated, plus, plus you can park in front, like you say, you can park in front of your doors. Someone else come over and have a couple people. Uh, so in addition to the height and the drainage, uh, which was just discussed, I also wanted to ask um, the board about the repaving of the street. I know that an initial letter I saw from DPW that street's supposed to be repaved um, in June of this year. And I didn't know if this project was supposed to take place before that or if that was not going to require any of the street to be dug up. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. And then there's a legitimate question. Uh, that was raised. We said that we would be um, actually be able to tie into utilities prior to that time. Okay. So it wouldn't interfere so with the Because you're not going to be able to dig it up, right? Right, right. right. So um, just in closing, just um, three floors seems to be the an issue for most of the neighbors over there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Is there anyone else opposed to running side? Uh, hello, my name is Scott Alessandro, 70 Edwards Street. I live behind the property. Um, I want to say all due respect to the gentleman representing Lancaster LLC. Uh, this new property does not fit in the neighborhood either. The current buildings that are there right now are not as large as the proposed buildings. The new buildings will dominate and be overbearing on the rest of the area. Um, it's one and two family houses around there. Uh, we're asking for something. This is a, a, a property that is significantly larger. I'm trying to figure out how with um, previously discussing uh, 251, 253, I think it was Granite Street, about such a large house and a small property. And now we have the similar small lot with an even smaller lot actually than that one um, with a same size building and two of them. Um, there have also been no complaints because there are no complaints. Uh, my wife and I, our family, we've lived there for 18 plus years. It's incredibly quiet. I realize that, um, you know, we might think, oh, this is commercial as opposed to residential, but it's actually a lot more quiet and I've never seen 10 cars on the property. So now my concern is, right, I thought it was just two to eight, now there's two guest spots, so there's, and then there's one can park mm -hmm. right there in front of the door. So now I've never seen more than maybe three or four that maybe come at one time and then leave. Now what we're saying is there's gonna be 10 cars, maybe more coming at all times. So this actually is gonna increase the traffic in the area tremendously. Um, and I also wanna say uh, regarding uh, Anthony Andronico did not call for a community meeting because he knew he would be against it. I don't know why you didn't call for a community meeting, but I think the fact that there wasn't a community meeting should not in any way say that we are in support of this, mm -hmm. um, right? The fact that he never came and spoke to any of us who lived uh, jutting, uh, abutting that property, I think is how he knew how we would feel about it. So I think if he supported it, I think we know the fact that he never came and spoke to us about it pretty much tells you what he thought we would feel about the property, about the mm -hmm. building. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a building there, mm -hmm. but the size is, it's not necessary. Um, I understand why they want to do that, why they, they want to maximize revenue on that space, <coughs> but you're taking this uh, densely packed community that we keep talking about, and we say, let's make it even more densely packed for no reason. Um, so I, don't, I just don't see the reason why we need something that large, especially after just maybe at other times, just tonight, we heard about why do we need such a big house on such a small property. Thank you. They are two two bedroom units. That's what they are. They're not three and four bedroom units. They're two bedroom units. Yeah, but it's still the same. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're the same. It's two, they're two bedrooms in each each house. Is there anyone else? Pause one aside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Sarah Alessandro. I live at 70 Edwards Street, mm -hmm. which is directly behind this property. Mm -hmm. We've lived there, as my husband said, for over 18 years, and part of the reason we purchased this property was the privacy that was created in our backyard, mm -hmm. which will be completely eliminated. You speak about the drainage not working now. Um, when it rains very hard, there is some water that comes down. But I'm very curious how they're going to fit drainage between this property and my 
backyard, which is a change of elevation of three feet, and a parking space, and a drainage swale, and a fence. The prop of the house that they have designed looks beautiful if you're not taking into consideration how it's going to look with the buildings beside it and around it. These buildings are enormous. They were tower over the neighborhood, and in particular, my backyard. I am 100% opposed to these buildings. Not up, I'm not opposed to changing it to residential, but not what they've designed here. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Opposed on the side? Name and address for the record, come on. Wait till you get to the mic. Oh, okay. yeah. I own the three family across the street from this property. Mm -hmm. And I've owned it for about 40 years. And it's really a tight, close, it's a dead end. Could I have your name and address for the property? I didn't hear it. 12 Lancaster Street. Okay. Name? Doreen Chiritico. Thank you. Go ahead, and Doreen. Sorry to interrupt you. That's quite all right. <laughs> and it's really a tight road to get anything down. I needed a landscaper to come in, and his truck was too big to come down, so he couldn't get down there. The problem is, that if you get too many cars in and out, you can't move down there at all and hardly ever get the street plowed because it's so small. They park on both sides of the street on one side? They just park on, on the street? Well, that garage used to belong to Cherubini, who I bought the building from, who was the oil man in Quincy. And he had that whole area. And he built for the uh, workers. He had the, uh, the house that's at the very end was a, a, a rooming house. Oh. And then he built the garage for his trucks, for the oil. Mm. And then he had the house next door to that, for other people that were working for him. Mm -hmm. So he had the whole area. I don't think, you know, it wasn't planned at the time because a lot more cars to come in. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it would be an improvement on the street instead of the garage. But uh, it may just be a little too large for the, for the area, for the cars in and out. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you very much, Ruth. Is there anyone else? Pose one decided. Second call, third call. Call that part of the hearing course. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't look at it right. I looked at it like it was pretty nice Friday to get rid of that mess up. And put in a nice drainage down here. It is. Yeah, I gotta take. I, I, I want to take another look at it because it's just to me. I think you get everyone there complaining. I don't know what to complain. When I went up and looked at it, it didn't look like that. Maybe I, maybe I didn't look around the neighborhood right. I don't know. Did you? Did you see yeah, the little, just, little houses? I went up there and I saw this vet yeah, that we're trying to clean up. I thought it was sort a good idea. Sort of by what's there. Or not yeah, not that's not that's probably what got my head. I like, it would think this. also be good to. Have a chat with some of the, with these neighbors. Well, I, I can I can respond to the three stories though, because anything that's built there is going to be three stories. Exactly. It's three stories is not that we're not requesting a variance of the three stories. Right, right. The three that's stories just, is actually right, allowed right. by right. right. And you could actually build a much much larger building on this site. I'm just trying to trying to get my head at around. three stories. I you get could, it, you could uh, that whole interior portion could become buildings. I get it, council. I really. I mean, uh, I don't know what a neighborhood meeting is going to do. No, a neighborhood gonna meeting miss. isn't. I'm, I want to go look. I just want to take another look at the neighborhood and, and see everything that they said changes my mind at all. I, I, I'm looking at a big building over there when I come up, a building in, and two. It's all residence B. I mean, the next person is going to want a bigger one. I know. I, I get it. 
It's only two bedrooms each. I get that, and I'm glad you did that. I really am. I'm glad you did that, and I think it's nice. I just think two weeks, we'll come back 21st. I just need a couple weeks to look at it, and everyone. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. What do you think? Please, everyone, everyone, that part's over. That's us now. It's the board's decision. Anyone? Comments? I have a question for council. Okay. Just a clarification. Your drawings indicate a height of 31.9. Yes. Dimensional requirements. I mean, dimensional form. It says 36, 36, right? Yeah. Mine says 36. My Mine does too. My colleague says 35. I'm a little confused as to how. Yeah, Mine says 36. I'll rely on Brian for Mine that. I may not have been able to identify that, but I knew we were within the height limitation. Um, 31. Right? 31. 31.9. Nine. Thank you. Which is, I mean, if you build a single family home, it's like 32. Yeah. Right. 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 Well, having looked at all of the, I think Marty has made a good point. I mean, you are kind of dazed and saying, look at this big dumpy old warehouse. And yeah. instead of looking at the actual project, I don't think two weeks of service one way or the other. Right. Right. I don't think, I don't think. Yeah. I personally anyone, like it. It's a nice looking, it's on, there are only two bedrooms, but. Right. Um, if it clarifies everything in everyone's mind, then I'll think two weeks. Right, that it's 32, you know, 31 feet, 9 inches. It's not 36 feet, which and maybe the neighbors take some time to investigate what can go up there by right. Well, it can't. I, I, we all know that. It could be, right. In Stop. favor of, yeah, postponing for two weeks. Sure. Take another look. Mm -hmm. I have a motion, please, and we'll come back here and vote on it the uh, 24th. Okay, thank you. 21st, 21st, 21st. Oh, geez, 21st. 21st of March? Yes. Yeah. In case of BA 23 10 Lancaster Street LLC for variance to remove the existing commercial warehouse structures and pavement, construct two townhouses totaling four units on premises number 13 and 15 Lancaster Street. I hereby <coughs> move that this matter be continued to March the 21st. Second. On the motion, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. We've got a case number SDR 232 Yetchin Hall for a special permit to operate a short term rental. On the premises number 260 to 262 Southern Island. The applicant and a representative here. Name and address for the record, please. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Yetrin Po. I am the owner and the resident of 260 262 Southern Artery. It is a residential B zone. Uh, it is a two family home, which I have owned since 2018 and where I have also brought two of my children home to. I am here to apply for a short-term residential permit, uh, 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 an STR, and thank you for your consideration. Uh, how long have you been renting it out now? Sorry, say again? How long have you been renting it out? I haven't been renting it out. At all? Short-term rental, I'm applying straight. I've never applied for no, any short-term mo rental. Most people we have have I know, I, years, I know, I saw. Three years, now we, they got no I have there. never gotten a notice. I've never done and any short-term rental. I'm right. doing it by the book. Okay, so you are the owner? I am the owner. Everything in here, uh, director, everything in here has been checked, correct? Yep. So your electric bill, your gas, and all that stuff is all yours. What are you going to rent out there? What are you going to do for, for rentals? Uh, what am I going to do? Yeah, you're going to do one week a year, two weeks, ten weeks, every week? I yeah, I, most likely it's probably just going to be one week. In fact, Monday to Friday, maybe sometimes weekends. Most of the time it's also really because I travel quite a bit for my work mm -hmm. uh, internationally. Uh, so I want the house to be utilized. It's a beautiful house. We put a lot of money into making it nice. Who's uh, we? Me and my wife. I don't know. I'm <laughs> my wife, my children. Uh, All right. is, is, is your wife home when you're away traveling? Yep. Okay. Because we like to have the owner yep. around the property yep, absolutely. Uh, when, they, when they're renting out to people. Uh, those are my questions. I just want to make sure someone's, someone's home 
Are you renting it as, not for months? Are you, are you renting it as the unit, or are you going to rent rooms within the unit? Or is your plan? Yeah, well, I would like the option to have both, you know, because my wife will be home, and it's actually, so the way at which our house is structured is a two-family, but the upstairs unit has actually two floors. The attic is finished. So it's actually quite big. It's it's three, uh, sorry, four bedroom, but technically it's five bedroom. You know, there's an armoire that's not mm -hmm. a built-in closet per se. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a big uh, space. So we would like to be able to utilize it even if we are around or when we are not around. Mm -hmm. Questions? No question. Well, clarification. Yeah. Can you rent the whole unit? And you can also rent rooms in the unit. In in the unit? In in the unit yeah. that they live in, they could rent the room. Yeah, in that unit. Rent it, they can or they it could out rent thirty the, days or less, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And then they could also rent the entire unit on the second. But short term floor. rentals thirty days or less. So we can't say you're gonna stay here three months. No, 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 thirty no, no, days no. or less that you can rent either right. So, so how many people would you rent through at a time? But uh, what was confusing me is if he's coming in just for the two family for the second floor, or if he's coming in to rent the second floor and rooms in the first floor. In the fifth, in the attic, I think what you said, right? Well, yeah, you it's two floors. Yes, asking for permission for both rooms and the second, third floor, and first. Well, no, like either the whole unit or individual rooms. Uh, you know, so if I my whole family's out. I can just let people use the whole unit, but most of the time it's probably going to be like, hey, you can use. All right, get back house. to when you when you are gone. What yeah. do you mean when we are gone? Like, let's say if I were to take my family on one of my business trips, uh, it's most of the time Monday to Friday. I try to be back for the weekend because of soccer. The same week. Like, yeah. So you only leave for a oh, day. Yeah. Yeah. You don't leave for like three months. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> my kid, my kid goes to school. Yeah. Right, some people do. Though, you know. Yeah, yeah, no. All right. All right. Okay, now I just want a clarification. Uh, yeah. so, I, I just want a clarification right. on the unit. And it has just to be short-term rental. You know? No, I know. Yeah. I, 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 I wanted to know if it, right. if he just the whole unit was going to be rented or right. if it was the whole unit plus rooms in the other unit. Yeah. That's no, no. It's the other units rent it all the time, correct? Yes. So we're talking about your unit. Yes. You're going to have someone go up to the second floor, I mean the third floor probably? Yeah. To rent that first? Yeah. Okay. That's the attic. Yeah, uh, which is part of the second unit. Right. Second right. Floor. right. The but other you live there too, correct? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Now you live there too. I live there too, yes. So you're just going to... Let me get what we're doing. Your apartment's second and third floor. Yes. That's your apartment right now. That's right. So they're going to walk in your house and rent a room or two rooms? Yeah. All right. And it depends what you're doing. Yeah. All right. They don't have much you, parking. You know it's going to, uh, uh, the city's coming in, the fire, fire department will come in and take yep. a look. In fact, it was just All brand new renovated, so yeah. it was just inspected uh, last year. Uh, so it's uh, I have no concerns about any. No, I'm just yet. letting you know, and you know the health department, they all come through. They're yeah, absolutely, take a absolutely. Little tour. Uh, sorry, you were asking guys? about parking. Yeah, how many parking spaces do you have? So there are three parking spaces plus a garage uh, okay. for both for the entire building. Thank you. So do you have one designated that's going to be for the, for the person who comes in? Yep, it's in the submission. I, the I, saw it. Yeah. I just wanted to know if that's yes. the plan. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I'm no? good, thank you. All right, you can have a seat. Does anyone want to speak in favor? First call? Second call? Third call? We've got a letter here from the DBW. We reviewed the above reference matter and have no comments. Is there anyone opposed to undecided? First call? Second I, call? I a Come on, comment. Undecided. Undecided. Um, I was just looking at the picture and there's a 264 house that's in the back. It looks like there's a common driveway that they share. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I'm, this is, it almost looks like Goes around it's hard for them to right. even get all over their back. So let's say if someone lives in that house, they know about rules. 
but when you do do Airbnb, those people tend to not really care as much about what the rules are the and whatever. The city has a designated spot for the rentals. The renters have a designated spot. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just kind of speaking for the poor person who lives in 264 that somehow isn't here tonight. Yeah. They're, it's obviously going to make their life more miserable. But no, I it just ain't, feel because bad they're his parking spaces. They're his, behind his house. He has those three. Right. Well, like I yeah. said. That's going to change. There's a driveway in front of the other place. Right. Sure. There's a driveway in front of 264, and they can park over there, and they can park along the side of the house. Ooh. That's the way they park. Okay, okay. Well, like yeah. I said, it's not like I'm against it. I, no, no, I, no. I, I believe I'm trying to say there is parking. We, I mean, it's in residential B. I'm problem. for, I'm actually, uh, I'm for Airbnb. I think that people should be allowed to use Airbnb to help pay for their property taxes. So, um, Except for residents A. Accepting residence A, of course, <laughs> unless it's my house in residence A. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Except for residence Thank you, John. <laughs> to anyone else, opposed or undecided? Second call, third call, call up out of here and call us. I'll be voting in favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Great. Can we have a motion, please? Uh, in Mr. Frank. case number STR 23 2. Yenjin Po for a special permit to operate the short term rental on the premises number 260 262 Southern Artery, Quincy. I hereby move that the special permit be allowed. Second. On the motion, stand on all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Motion to adjourn, all in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> so moved.